Welcome everybody to another episode of the Real Estate Happy Hour Weekly. I'm your host, Chris Wright. I'm so excited to be back. Merry Christmas. It is December. I hope you had a great holiday. Merry Christmas. Happy Hanukkah. Happy Kwanzaa. Whatever you celebrate, it is the spirit of giving. It is the spirit of gratitude. Um, and it is the spirit of coming from contribution. So I just hope everyone is in good spirits and we're getting prepared for 2024. We have not had bad weather. Um, we didn't have winter weather, I should say. Um, so I expect a lot of snow in 2024, probably around, let's say, late January, early February. But because it's starting so late, sometimes what tends to happen is that it drifts up into um, April, sometimes Easter. So let's hope we don't have Easter snow. But um, I did today, like I said, I am going to talk about the 2020-24 uh, forecast. And um, just like a weather forecast, I'm allowed to be wrong. So if it doesn't happen as I say it will, then um, you can't say, oh, I thought the, the prices were going to go down and I thought we were going to get more inventory. I'm giving it away. But everything that I forecast for 2024 is all based on research that I've done, reading multiple articles um, and just studying my craft. All right. So just know that I, I've done my research and I have pretty good data that say my forecasts will be right and exact. But again, just like the weather, I could be wrong. I'll be right back, guys. We're going to talk about those things as well as a couple of other um, hot topics that's going on in the state of New York. But it's going to affect us nationally. And that subject is Chick-fil-A. And we also are going to talk about something that funny, funny that happened on Twitter. Um, former Steeler Rashard Mendenhall um, made a very, very stupid quote about black players versus white players in the NFL. And you know what? If you don't get too crazy about it, we had a lot of fun with it. I was on another person's podcast and we just built our teams, black teams versus white teams. And it was kind of fun. Um, no, it was very fun, I should say. And uh, I'll talk to you about that when we come back on the other side. Thanks for listening. Thanks for joining us. Take care. This is the Real Estate Happy Hour, and I'm your host, Chris Wright. It's a fun place where we talk real estate, pop culture, and what's trending. Hey, I might even give you some good advice. So grab yourself a drink, sit back, relax, and take a listen. Unless you're driving, of course. I'll see you guys on the other side. All right, ladies and gentlemen, welcome back. As I said, today's show, we're going to start. We're going to talk about my forecasts for the housing market in 2024. So get ready. Grab your drinks because it is the happy hour. I don't care what time it is. If you're a day drinker, sit back and relax. If you're a night drinker, check in this uh, podcast out or YouTube video in the evening. Make sure you got your drink and you're ready to go. All right. Got this cool little Stanley thermos cup given to us by our neighbor. Um, shout out to the Demings. Thanks so much. All right, guys. So let's talk about what's happening in 2024 in the housing market. So right now, houses, homes are selling. Every time someone asks me, how's the market? How's the market? Or I'd say I'm a real estate agent. They looked at me with like, ah, oh, it must be rough. No, there's a lot of buyers out in the market. So homes are selling um, and they're just looking for a house to buy because there is not a ton of inventory, but it is getting better. Um, inventory is rising. It's getting better right now. There are houses to buy and actually they're staying on the market a little bit longer. So <clears throat> there's still multiple offers, but that's even slowing down as well. So don't despair. There are houses to buy. I also forecast that prices will dip alongside with the interest rates. So both are going to dip. Um, the prices, home prices will dip. Interest rates will dip. And we're going to see more flips because more investors are going to buy houses that they can renovate and remodel. So you'll start to see the inventory come up a little bit. 
There's a lot of foreclosures on the market and they are going to be bought, flipped and sold. All right. Um, more divorced couples. So, you know, the divorce rates like 50, 50 percent. All right. So but more divorced couples are going to fight over who keeps the house because of the mortgage rate. So if you bought a house together, say a few years ago at, you know, the low twos, 2.5 to 3 percent. And that marriage isn't working out and you guys got to decide who gets to keep the house. People are going to be fighting over who gets to keep the house because the person that has to go buy the house is going to get a higher interest rate. So keep your eye on that. All right. There will be a lot more price reductions. All right. There was a time that no one, there was no price reductions. All houses were selling at a hundred percent or higher. And I think we're going to see more price reductions and people are going to, um, home sellers, they will be lowering those prices. So stand by, don't be afraid to make offers that are lower than asking and Hey, let's see what happens. Okay. Just so keep your eye on that as well. All right. Um, a lot of the markets, um, they're going to reach pre pandemic levels in inventory pre pandemic at levels talking about 2019 where there was more houses. So what we look for is three months of inventory. And right now we are only seeing one month of inventory or less. So, um, I think we're going to start seeing more and more and more inventory as various things happen, whether it's going to be people are deciding to just sell their homes, people are buying new constructions, people are upsizing, people are downsizing. And I do believe that in 2024, we will see more inventory. All right. Rents, mortgages and interest rates should all dip a little bit, probably one to two percent in 2024. Right. So the reason that we even had the um, the increase in price over the last year or so and is because of scarcity. There wasn't a lot of houses to buy and there was just so many, so many buyers in the market. There was just not enough inventory. So sellers could charge what they wanted. Man, people were going 50, 60, $100,000 over asking, and it just got out of hand and it just wasn't a good market for the buyers. And that's going to change. Once we see an increase in inventory, prices will go down and more people will be in the market. So here's what I want to say right now, right now, end of December, January, February, even with the interest rates at 7%, it is a good time to buy and get in the house that you want to get into. Because what's going to happen if you buy like right now to the end of February, you are smart. <clears throat> All right. Um, it's going to be just like those people like myself who bought homes at the end of COVID or I'm sorry, at the beginning of COVID. We ran out. People are like, what are you doing buying houses during COVID when, because it was a smart time to buy people. Were, some people were losing jobs. A lot of people were staying home, eating DoorDash. Um, and for a lot of people, they weren't thinking about buying houses. And right at the beginning, there were houses on the market. Um, it was winter time and you could go out and get a very good price because sellers were kind of nervous and scared about the employment situation. Um, and you could get, get a really good price. Six months later, like when spring hit, forget about it. You could not get a house at asking or below because everybody started to flood, flood the market. They were at home saving money. They had more money to put down and a frenzy just started and it went crazy. But I was sitting back with my 2.7% interest rate, my great price home, 2,200 square feet. I got it at a really, really good price. So that's what I'm saying to you now. I highly recommend that you buy now because if you wait till spring and interest rates do go down, you're going to be back in the market with a whole bunch of people. And you're going to go, damn it. Why wasn't I smart? And why were, why was I so scared to buy in January? You're going to regret not buying right now. Because like I said, inventory is returning and prices are dropping. It may not seem like a lot. It may be 1%, 2%. So 
So right now, smart people are buying. Um, and because like I said, when the interest rates drop, you're going to be SOL and you're going to wish you had done it. So buy now, don't wait. So as I told you, I did some uh, research, Redfin, Zillow, Realtor.com, Homes.com, Fox Business, um, just a ton of websites and articles about the 2020, 2024 forecast. All right. So here's some um, predictions. Listing prices, you know, they're going to fall. All right. High housing costs will remain a problem for young families. A lot of the millennials, um, the, the Gen Zers, but they're in a really bad place right now. So um, but we are starting to see signs of a shift towards a buyer's market. As like I said, some of those pandemic driven, you know, inflations are starting to take its last gasp. All right. I think we're almost out of this. It's my forecast. Mortgage rates will come down a little bit. Um, and because of that, more people will start to list their homes because they didn't sell because they were waiting for the mortgage rates to go down a little bit. And I think now they're going to creep back up. I'm talking about the the um, inventory, all right? Um, and I just think that some of these trends that I'm talking about, they are going to continue through the new year, probably through the second and third quarter. And then we may see a spike again, depending on what you guys do in the market. If you buy now, it'll level out. If you start waiting and it's a whole bunch of people in the market, it may be a different story, all right? So prediction number one, as I said, home prices will fall about 1%. Um, year over year, and that's going to happen in the second or third quarter. So buy now. Don't wait for those prices to drop. Don't wait for those interest rates to drop. Buy now so you're, you're, there's not a ton of competition. Actually, that'll be the first time when this happens, if everything goes as planned, when that happens, it's going to mark like the first time um, that we've had a price decline in housing since like 2012. Okay. So what's my next prediction? That new listings will take up, as we just talked about. Home prices are going to fall because supply will rise more. All right? Home prices will fall because supplies will rise. You know, we've seen a double-digit annual increase in homeowners contacting, you know, Zillow and Redfin and home, um, Realtor.com for help with selling their homes, looking for an agent. So if you're an agent... And I tell people this all the time. People go, I don't like the cold call. I don't like the cold call. Get on those phones, agents, and start calling people because because people want to sell. And you need to educate them with the Chris Wright method that tells them now is a good time to sell because there are people out there ready to buy. So that's prediction number two. New listings will tick up. All right. What's prediction number three? Home sales will increase. And in the year up, probably about 5%. You heard me say it. Home sales will increase up about 4 to 5%. So I'm glad I'm in it. I'm glad I got back into this business full time, strong, because I knew I saw something on the wall. I saw writing on the wall that said 2024 going to be a great year. I'm going to hit my goals. A lot of you agents out there, if you listen to me, you too are going to hit your goals because it's about to go down. Just get ready. All right. Prediction number four. Mortgage rates will steadily decline, but they're going to remain above 6%. But if you got your house at 8%, 2%, it's a pretty good um, refi dip. So um, I do think mortgage rates may, may be in the high fives, but remain around 6% across the board. Um, just keep that in mind. This is my forecast. Again, I could be wrong, but just the way watching the market like I do and watching the way things are going, I do believe that uh, we may see mortgage rates in the sixes again. All right. What else do I want to predict? I want to predict that there's going to be a, a slight shift in how we buy and sell real estate. Um, if you've been paying attention to the news, there's been some lawsuits and things like that um, on how commissions are being, I, I don't want to say manipulated, but people are being really savvy about buying or buying homes and selling homes. 
Home sellers want to know why some of the interest rates are so high and not the commission rates are so high with real estate agents. They've been the same across the board for a long time. And sellers are just being a little bit more savvy in how they've go, they're going to do business with real estate agents and buyers are going to be a little bit more smart in how they do business with real estate agents. So what does that mean for the real estate agent when it comes to commissions? What it means is that right now, not yesterday, right now, not tomorrow, right now, you need to start reaching out to your customer base, talking to them about your value selling them your value and how important it is for you to represent them in a real estate transaction. Because if you don't, people are just going to start calling the signs. People are just start going, going to start going on Zillow. There is a service, servicebyrealtor.com called Upnest. Okay. And you can actually go on Upnest and look at proposals from real estate agents to negotiate the commission before you even meet them. All right. So guys, real estate agents, this is for you. Sell your value. Make sure that your people stay your people. Negotiate with them so you get the, 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 the business from them. You don't want them going online looking for real estate agents. So my forecast is that business is going to change dramatically on how buyers and sellers buy homes and how they use real estate agents and how they negotiate commissions with you sitting at the kitchen table. Get on the phones, start talking to your customer base about how you will service them when it comes to buy and sell a home. All right. So very, 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 very important. All right. Another prediction that renting is going to become more popular. The whole thing about renting um, or buying is better than renting. That's going to be a tough myth to sell to um, Gen Zers and even some millennials because Housing prices had gotten so out of control that young people are graduating from college. They're getting married in their 20s and they just want a place to live. They want a roof over their head. And there's a lot of analysts and very smart people, economists that are telling them it's OK to rent. So investors are buying more properties and renting them. I'm seeing more rental developments go up. Um, we're seeing signs that like, you know, young people are like redefining the American dream. You know, in my day and my parents day, it was always like graduate from college, get a job, buy a home. Today's young, young people are not seeing it that way. Now, I saw something, something, a stat that said nearly one in five millennials who responded to a 2023 housing survey believe they will never own a home. Some are resigned to rent for the rest of their lives. And then there, there are some that renting is not a choice. So just keep in mind um, that you don't want to say disparaging comments about people who want to rent. What you want to do is you want to, talking to real estate agents, you want to make those renters your friends. You want to put them in your database. You want to be a resource for information letting them know that when you decide to buy, I'm the guy to call because their incomes will change. Right now, their entry level incomes, they're not making enough to buy a home. I think across the nation, we at one point, we were at an average monthly mortgage of $3,200. Who can afford $3,200? Some people were only making $3,200 a month. So um, as their incomes increase, as they get promotions, as their lifestyles increase, you want to be the one agents that they are calling. And you know what? If you don't want to do it, I'll do it. <laughs> I'm just saying. So just make sure um, that you are getting, uh, you're more patient, um, that you're not desperate, that you're not breathing, just, you know, despair that I need to sell. I need to sell. No, you want to meet people. You want to build relationships. You want to meet parents. You just want to let them know, Hey, you know what? Understand, go ahead and rent your property for a year or two when you are ready to buy or sell. Give me a call. And if you are that type of person, then you're going to sell to their friends. You're going to sell to their parents. You're going to help people downsize. You're going to help people upsize. You are going to be the go-to resource. So, and the last prediction is that 
right now the president is saying that we have a housing problem. A president should never say we have a housing problem. And that's going to affect the election next year of 2024. If the current administration keep talking about a housing problem, then there's going to be change in the White House. And I know a lot of you are wishing for that change anyway, but Gen Zers and millennial voters and those people who are becoming new voters, they're hearing this. They're hearing this and they're going to start thinking, you know what? I think it's time to vote for someone who's going to fix this whole housing situation so I can afford a home. All right. So those are my predictions for 2024. Remember, it's just a forecast. I don't have a crystal ball, but just based on all the research that I'm reading, based on a lot of the uh, empirical and analytical data that's out there, it says that I am right and I cannot wait with this new housing market coming up in 2024. All right, guys, that's it. I'll be right back. We're going to talk some New York State versus Chick-fil-A. I can't wait. See you on the other side. Hey guys, thanks so much for listening to and watching the podcast Real Estate Happy Hour. Um, I really appreciate it. But don't forget to subscribe on YouTube. Don't forget to like it. Give me a thumbs up. Also, give me five stars on the podcast. Even if you don't like it, you don't like what I got to say, give me five stars because if you're listening to my clips on TikTok or Reels or Facebook, you know what? The algorithm. Uh, it keeps bringing me back to you, and I would really, really appreciate that. I'm putting myself out there on Front Street. I'm giving you my life as I see it. I'm giving you my worldview as I see it. So I really re would appreciate it if you support me. Thanks so much. I'll talk to you guys. See you next week on the Real Estate Happy Hour Weekly. Take care. Bye-bye. All right, ladies and gentlemen, now we're going to discuss um, a hot topic that's in the news over the last couple of days, and it's about uh, Chick-fil-A. Yep, the chicken sandwich restaurant versus the state of New York. Now, I have to give you a little background um, so you understand. So New York um, is known as a blue state, but that's because the a large majority of the population is down in New York City, which makes it very blue. So usually um, Democrats win the state, um, but upstate is very red. A lot of Republicans, a lot of conservatives. And I live up here um, in a very conservative area. Uh, but Chick-fil-A um, has had its opponents over the years because uh, they are they're, are considered a religious organization, the owners. Um, they have very conservative views. Um, they've actually they've been known to donate to anti LGBTQ organizations. Um, they 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 just have had their issues politically. And um, so that's why anything with New York and Chick-fil-A is going to be a hot topic. And the reason this topic went national is because South Carolina Senator Lindsey Graham, um, he took the X, formerly known as Twitter. He said he's going to declare a literal war on the proposed New York bill that would force uh, Chick-fil-A locations to open on Sundays. Now, this is only an issue on the New York State Thruway. If you're not watching this in New York or listening to this in New York, our thruway is kind of our highway toll system that runs uh, um, east and west. And there's rest areas on there and north and south as well. Um, so there was a company, I believe, called Apple Green or Green Apple, something like that. And they took over all the rest areas and they decided which restaurants are going to go in these rest areas. Well, they signed a contract with Chick-fil-A. And Chick-fil-A said, we do not open our locations on Sundays. And I guess that was OK with um, Green Apple. And so here we have it. But what what wasn't considered was the amount of travelers that travel up and down the thruway on Sundays. And people are complaining that they can't get Chick-fil-A on Sundays. And now the state of New York wants to jump in and propose a bill that would force Chick-fil-A to open on Sundays. Now, my personal opinion is no bueno, because if I was a business owner and I told you my principles and I told you how I operate my business and you still allowed me to open my business, you can't come back a year later and go, wait, you need to open on Sundays because 
for Chick-fil-A. It is a religious issue. They consider it a day of rest and they don't want to open on Sundays. And that's their prerogative. And I don't think they should be forced to open on Sundays. Um, but Lindsey Graham, like I said, having nothing to do with New York, he said, I'm going to introduce legis legislation um, that's going to withhold federal funds from any city or state that requires Chick-fil-A to stay open on Sundays. He said the founders of Chick-fil-A made a decision early on to close on Sundays, consistent with their faith, consistent with their values. And for any government who try to reverse this decision, flies in the face of who we are as Americans. Chick-fil-A is a great company with thousands of locations serving the public with a quality product and taking care of their employees. New York is off base and their actions will not go unanswered. So that's Lindsey Graham chiming in. Um, this is a very, very hot topic. Uh, like I said, people are going to call it political. And like I said, it is going to be political. People are saying it's a religious and people are also saying it's ethics involved. And really, for me, it's just about business. It's, it's good business that Chick-fil-A should not be forced to do anything when everybody across the nation knows the Chick-fil-A policy on Sundays. So I say, let's leave them alone, let them run their businesses, and no bill should be passed by state legislature uh, to make them open their doors on Sunday. So um, I put a Facebook post up about that um, I, six hours ago. There's already 78 comments, and I don't see them stopping anytime soon because for a lot of people in upstate New York particularly, this is a hot topic because the throughway uh, runs through upstate New York. Um, so this is going to be something that I don't see going away for a while. I personally think that um, New York will bend um, and they'll give this fight up because I don't think it's a battle that they can win. But tell me what you think in the comments about New York trying to pass a bill to keep Chick-fil-A open. Well, not keep, but to force Chick-fil-A to open on Sundays. Um, I just don't think it's a good look. And if <clears throat> if New York believes that they currently have problems with voters um, in the Republican or conservative parties, uh, it's only going to get worse with a move like this. So. Um, let's, uh, stay in that space and see what happens. All right. So what else is trending? So this is about a week old. We had, um, Richard Mendenhall. I'm a Steelers fan. Richard Mendenhall is a former running back for the Pittsburgh Steelers. And, uh, <clears throat> he had a tweet and it talked about, he was really upset because he felt that white Football analysts were giving their opinions about black players, and I'll, I'll put the quote up right here. But um, yeah, it was a very stupid. Now, first of all, me personally, race issues, I really don't like to talk about them because it is very divisive. They start fights, people get angry. Races, really. I was in a race discussion on TikTok recently, and I'm having fun with it. I'm just like, come on, people. Lighten up. It's just skin color. Let's not, like I said, let's not be, have our worldviews about skin color. But anyway, so Rashad Mendenhall had this tweet. And um, me and a friend, uh, Nathan Baker, who has uh, the DJ Boolanger podcast and YouTube video, um, we said, let's have some fun with this and let's create some teams. And we actually had to come up with team names and logos and coaches. And then we had to put our players. So Nathan, who's white, had an all white team and I created an all black team. And we just talked about, you know, who would win again. Good friend. And we just had a lot of fun with it. So I'm going to tell you the name of my team was Black Legs Matter. That's right. Black Legs Matter. And my coach was Mike Tomlin. Now, we did full rosters. We did QBs, offensive lines, wide receivers, the whole nine. So I'm going to tell you who my my starters were for the Black Legs Matter team. Um, Lamar Jackson was my QB one. His backups were Dak Prescott and Jalen Hurts. Um, and you might ask me, why didn't I choose Patrick Mahomes? Uh, because... Because uh, Nathan's team lacked so much depth on the offensive end, I said that you can have all the mixed race players. <laughs> so we had a lot of fun with that. Uh, my running back was Raheem Mostert with the Miami Dolphins and Josh Jacobs with the Raiders. And my wide, rec wide receivers was uh, Tyreek Hill 
and Justin Jefferson and Devontae Adams. And my tight end was uh, David Njoku um, of the Cleveland Browns. And like I said, we did full rosters. So we did kickers, we did punters, we did offensive line, defensive line, defensive back safeties. We did the whole thing. So um, I'm going to put the link down here so you can watch that podcast, YouTube video, see how much fun we had with it. Because like I said, um, it's race situations and race conversations are just in my mind, stupid. So I think that we should um, have some fun with it. And Rashard Mendenhall, his, by the way, his tweet got 88 million views. And I, I told Nathan, I said, the crazy part about this is that 88 million people just saw how stupid this guy is for making a post like that. Um, so again, I let the mixed race players go to Nathan's team. We, like the black team, we didn't have a kicker. So I decided that we're just going to go for it on fourth down every time. So, yeah, so we had a lot of fun with that. Um, so, yeah, that's our show for today. It was short and sweet and to the point. Um, if you have any comments about anything we talked about today, specifically the 2024 housing forecast, let me know. Put your notes in the comments. And I look forward to seeing you guys next week. Um, you guys have a great week. Chris Wright, Real Estate Happy Hour Weekly Podcast and YouTube video. I'll talk to you guys later. Have a good one. Take care.